Pump up the volume on your parenting with Parent Pump Radio. Tune into something different that makes a difference. At Parent Pump Radio, instead of a ripple, we choose to create a splash. Get energized, get inspired, and get informed with how to parent in the new millennium. With your host and parent coach super guide, Jacqueline T.D. Wynn. Welcome to Parent Pump Radio. Our show is available on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher, and syndicated on missionsradio.org and oneideaaway.com. Go to parentpumpradio.com to leave your questions, comments, and suggestions for future shows, and be sure to subscribe to our RSS feed so you'll be automatically notified of new shows. Our guest today has been here before. He is a successful businessman, investor, and attorney. He specializes in tax, business, real estate, and estate planning. In his early days, he was a canine officer and a deputy sheriff for L.A. County. He has a genuine love and passion for creating a long-term relationship with his clients to educate them and really help them create a multi-generational wealth for family and financial freedom. So ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to Maurice Kempner. Hi, Maurice. Hi, Jackie. How you doing? I'm doing awesome. You can find Maurice at truelegacywealth.com and also minutemantax.com. And those two websites are in the show notes. Let's talk about IRAs, individual retirement account. Uh, I know they've been around since the 70s and why people invest in that for their retirement versus real estate investing. Take it away, Maurice. If, you, if you're going to compare uh, IRAs or these traditional retirement programs with real estate, it's quite a comparison to see what our program is, the True Legacy Wealth Program. It's designed to create multi-generational wealth in a family, and a family is whatever. It's just the people you love and that you're closest to. It could be. It's a lot of things to a lot of different people. That's what we mean by family. So in the traditional plan, you make these contributions into your plan every year. You can't get any money out until you reach a certain age, a retirement age, and then you get uh, the money out. Now, because of inflation, the amount of money that you take out has to increase every year. So for example, whatever money you had about 20 years ago is worth about 60% less now approximately due to inflation. So let's take a look at that. As you put the money into those retirement accounts, It's losing value over time. And so the return on that money has to be enough to overcome those inflationary losses. Then when you get up there and it's time to retire, when I look at my clients' retirement funds that they've been contributing to, we go in and we make calculations. A very high percentage of time, once we adjust for inflation, their accounts are very similar to the amount of money they put in. So the increase in value has done very little more than just cover the cost of inflation. Now, one of the reasons for that is because there's a lot of fees with these accounts. Now, my family always told me, and my family had wealth for generations, the wealthy people in my family told me that you want to acquire assets that generate cash flow, do it as a family, and move them from generation to generation. Now, that contrasts with what most people are told, which is, get good grades in school so you can get into a good college so you can have a good career and a good retirement. You see the difference. Now, <clears throat> by when you go down and you sign up for a 401k, it's a type of partnership. Anytime you're in business with anybody, it's, it's a type of partnership. Even if it's opening a checking account, you're in a partnership with the bank, right? So when you go open a 401k, you're the partner that puts all the money in the other partner, Merrill Lynch or the bank, whoever it is, they put no money in. Therefore, since you put all the money in, you have all the risk, right? Um, there's not a lot of lobbyists lobbying for people who contribute money to 401ks, but you can bet Wall Street has a lot of lobbyists working for them. And then what they do is they generate fees on your account so they get an asset that generates regular cash flow on a regular basis, right? That's what wealthy people tell their kids to do. That's what my family told me to do. They've now acquired an asset that generates cash flow on a regular basis. You haven't. They start to collect cash on it now. 
you have to wait until you retire and then hope that you can sell things for more than you pay for. Real estate, on the other hand, if instead of using the money to put into these retirement accounts. Let's talk about the real estate later because I want to let people, because I'm going to bring up a PowerPoint presentation so that we can do the comparison. But I want to address that most people think that a 401k or an IRA that they have to put money into the stock market. And that's not true. Well, you can uh, put money into what they call a self-directed IRA. Now, that's outside of your company. Uh, typically, most employers, they won't have self-directed IRAs. In the, they have IRAs or 401ks, so they call self-directed, but that just means you have the right to go in there and pick what stocks and mutual funds you want to invest in. But for the purposes we're talking about, there are self-directed IRAs that you have to set up and manage by yourself, so you can buy and sell real estate within those funds. Now, I don't recommend those. I, would, I think it's better just to, and, and there's different schools of thought on this, but you can run the numbers in an analysis we won't do on this show today. It's, it's a little complex. But I think any time you put one tax shelter in another, it usually doesn't work as well. And real estate is a great tax shelter in and of itself. And then you're putting it in another tax shelter, the, the self-directed IRA. When we use these self-directed IRAs, it's typically when somebody has been putting money into their retirement for years and years. And now instead of retiring and then just burning that money up over the years in their retirement, they can then, once they're not with their employer anymore, now they can move it out of their employer's program. They can roll it over into their own self-directed IRA program. And then they can put it into real estate. And then the rent they collect is the monthly check they can get out of there. Now, as so the real estate goes up in value and rents go up over in time with inflation, they've got cost of living increases, their account value, so to speak, goes up. And that's the difference between just doing that in a regular 401k in the stock market. Okay, so we have a presentation. For those who are listening to the show, we're going to do the best that we can to uh, explain what's on the presentation but this is also going to be going on youtube so that you should go to our youtube channel at parentpumpradio.com and uh, you can see the presentation side by side okay now one of the one of the things that i will mention that might be interesting for people to do there's a series on the pbs public broadcasting system called Frontline. It's a documentary series and they do documentaries on stuff. You can go to YouTube and just put in a search there, put Frontline, the retirement gamble. And what you'll get is this show. It's at least an hour long. And it talks about a lot of the problems that you're going to see in a more extensive way if you want more information on it with these type of retirement accounts. One of the things it talks about is how all these fees drain the profits out of there and how they're hidden and hard to find and, and how not that many Americans are prepared for retirement and how a lot of them who have put away in retirement have lost their retirement money in the market for various reasons. And then the second part of the show kind of goes into all these fees and how the profits are drained out and basically Wall Street ends up making more money than you. The president of... Um, one of the biggest mutual fund uh, companies in there states that he thinks Wall Street is getting around 70% of the profit. Wow. So you can, you can just watch it and come to your own conclusions, and, and uh, that will address a lot of the issues we just don't have time here to look at. And those are all things you can avoid with, when you do real estate because – you own the real estate. You're you're in charge. You're not siphoning fees off to other people that you don't choose to siphon fees to, and the fees aren't hidden, and you know what they are. Like, for example, if you have a property manager. So I just think it's better to control your own destiny. We have a team of people that can help you deal with those things you don't know. Our job is to teach you how to do uh, real estate. <clears throat> That's one of the reasons why a lot of people don't do it is the barrier to entry uh, that's what they call it a business. They, they don't understand real estate. They're not familiar with it. So there's really no barrier to entry to a traditional retirement account. You just go down and 
put your money in there and you're in. Uh, you don't have to do anything. On real estate, you have to know what market to buy, look for properties, that kind of thing. Uh, another good example of this is if you wanted to start a pharmaceutical company, well, you need millions and millions of dollars. Most people don't have that, but the profit margins are very high. So there's a big barrier to entry. That's why not every, that's why there's not large numbers of people who just go out and do that. But the barriers to entry in real estate, are, even though they're higher than a retirement account, they're still attainable by a regular person with a little help and knowledge. And usually the higher the barrier to entry in business, as a general rule, the more profit potential there is. Yeah, look at the credit card companies. Credit card companies, oil 30%. Companies, <laughs> banks. Yeah, exactly. Let's go through this and uh, we'll try to explain this as best as possible for the people who are just listening to the show. Okay. So we're going to have two sides. Retirement account is going to be on the left side, income properties on the right side. So let's talk about what gains that you would get income wise so if you have a roth ira 401k ira what kind of income are you getting well you're not going to get any income until you retire uh, when you buy positive cash flow properties which are the ones we like to sell from the beginning you start to get cash flow now you don't have to wait until you retire cash flow comes in as rental income and so you don't have to sell your rental property to get paid. In most of these retirement accounts, you have to sell the asset to get the money. You have to sell the stock or the mutual fund. That's like going down and cutting down your orchard and selling it for firewood instead of uh, harvesting the fruit or nuts or whatever off of it and selling them every year for a regular consistent income. Right. And, and, and it doesn't make more money, whereas with an income property, you can raise the rent and it goes with the four rules of income that we talked about in the earlier shows about right. appreciating and matches inflation. Right. So if you have two to 3% increase in rent every year, or whatever the rate of inflation is, rent tends to go up with it there. Then you've got these automatic built-in pay increases. And as the tenants are paying the rent, and you're getting the spread, the amount over the mortgage and other expenses. That's going to go up over time as rents go up. But your payment on the property will stay the same. And the amount that is paid to pay off the loan will increase over time as the loan gets paid off. More of the payment that the tenant is making for you increases your equity more and more over time. And then you have appreciation on the property. So you have all those things. So that's your account balance is your equity. That continues to go up without having to sell your property. Right. You have to cut down your orchard just to make money. Right. That's <laughs> okay. a big difference. Yes, it is. Let's talk about wealth accumulation. Right. So you have to take out more money every year for inflation. So, for example, if, if you retired 20 years ago, the money you had in your retirement account 20 years ago, that money you had there on that day is now worth approximately 60% less or so with 3% annual inflation. So if I retired 20 years ago with a million dollars, that amount is now only worth about 400000 In buying power after inflation, yes. Now, your house, on the other hand, will tend to go up with inflation in, in, in markets where that are really stable and there's not a lot of appreciation. They still tend to go up with inflation just because you can there's house you've got to build houses and so on and it just costs what it costs and those costs go up and so properties are worth what they're worth just just going up with inflation so you're still going to get a replacement of that loss due to inflation and then rent is going to go up with inflation so your income is going to go up every year wealth your account balance is going to go up every year or over time, maybe some years it goes up, some years it goes down, but over time, over the last 20 years, if you look at just about any real estate market, I don't know of anywhere it's not the case, rents are much higher than they were 20 years ago, and the properties are worth more than they were 20 years ago. Whereas in your retirement account, that money you had in there is worth less. 
You're a tax man. Let's talk about taxes. What can we benefit? Well, if you do a regular and not a Roth type of 401k or retirement account, you can get a tax deduction now, but all that does is defer taxes. And a lot of people don't realize this, but you still pay Social Security and Medicare taxes on the money you put into your IRA or your 401k. It's only the income taxes that are deferred. And so then when you look at your retirement account, it's really not the amount of money that's in there, unless it's a Roth, where you've paid your income taxes up front. So if somebody has a regular 401k, regular IRA, the money that's in there, part of that is belongs to the government. It's taxes. If, you, if it says you got a $200,000 balance, that's not the case. That's a lot less than that. There are these required minimum distributions of non-Roth type accounts. Now, once you get to the age of 70 and a half, the government wants you to take out the money over a period of time that they think is going to equal your lifetime because these programs are not designed to create multi-generational wealth like our program is. Our program is designed for that. These programs are designed to be consumed and used up in your retirement. And if by 70 and a half, you're not taking enough out or you're not taking any out, they make you take it out. Um, the other thing is, is you have to trust the government. The, it's like signing a contract with a partner because the government in these accounts is, besides the company that's holding the money for you, the government is also a partner. And they can change the contract anytime they want. They just go to Congress and pass a new law and they change it. And now these are the rules for 401ks and IRAs. And these rules have changed consistently over the years for in various ways. And who knows what they're what they're going to do. I think you have a safer situation with real estate where they can't come in and change your contracts <clears throat> that you have to purchase the property or with tenants or things like that. Those, those things are pretty much set. There's tax sheltered gain in real estate. You're not required to make these required minimum distributions. Your wealth continues to go up. So if you retired 20 years ago with real estate, the real estate's worth more now than it was 20 years ago. The rent's higher than it was 20 years ago. You can do what they call tax-free exchanges on property. So if you put $25,000 down on a $100,000 property, and then the equity increases in that from the tenants paying it down and appreciation and other things, now you got 50000 of equity. You could take that 50000 and put 25000 down on two new properties that are now worth more than that property. And you just roll the profit from that property into the two new properties and there's no taxes on it. You can do, do these kind of, it's called a 1031 exchange. It's a tax-free exchange. And you build up all these profits over your lifetime. When you die, the government will step up the basis in those properties so that when your heirs inherit them, it's treated as though your heir went out and bought the property for what it was worth on the day you died. And they start to depreciate it all over again. They own it uh, for what it's worth on that day. And nobody ever pays any income taxes on all those gains over the years. Now, that's a tax shelter. You can't do that in these 401ks. If you have, when you take the money out, you're going to pay taxes on it. When you die, your heirs are going to pay taxes on the money when they take it out. The only one that doesn't do that is a Roth. So in that respect, I think at least a Roth is a better of the two, but uh, of the two types. But the thing is, you can't get a deduction right now. Right. So real estate is kind of like a Roth in that sense. You don't get a deduction right now for the money you invest, but there's huge tax shelter down the road. Let's talk about equity, which you don't get in a retirement account. Oh, and let me add one other thing on that last slide uh, real quick. When you put money into these retirement accounts, there's restrictions on how much you can put in, depending on your income and other things like that and the type of program it is. But you can invest all the money you want to in real estate. So there's a there's another difference. Um, <clears throat> so what happens with these traditional accounts, they're they're not they're not designed to create multi-generational wealth. And so what happens is you end up being in a race uh, from the time you retire until you die as to whether you're gonna run out of money first or you're gonna die first. 
And nowadays, you're finding people living a lot longer than they used to. So, right. so a lot of these ads you see uh, in papers and TVs and radio, whatever, they, they from these uh, companies that sell these stocks or mutual funds, these 401ks, they're always talking about making sure how you have enough money to last you for your lifetime. That's why you end up in this race. And everybody knows that's the big problem is not to run out of money before you die. Whereas with uh, real estate, your equity tends to go up, your income tends to go up, your loan is getting paid off by tenants, and then as time goes on, you've got all these properties that are paid off and, and giving you higher cash flow. And then you leave a paycheck for life to your heirs, your kids usually, where they're going to get regular consistent income for the rest of their life. And you can't just can't do that with a 401k. It's very difficult to pass that on to the next generation without uh, a lot of problems because they're just not designed. And you have to just hope that in your 401k that your stock and mutual funds are gonna go up over time. There's a lot of companies that have gone out of business in the last 20 years, big companies. I mean, I remember Circuit City used to be a big company and they're gone. Kmart, so, yeah, Sears Kmart, is now going out of business. Sears has had trouble, Radio Shack, whatever. But with real estate, as a general rule, you've got this land in this building. It's not going to go to nothing. It's probably going to be a worth at least something. So to me, that's better security than just stock in a company. Like you said earlier, you have more control and power, whereas with stock, you're putting it in Wall Street, which they have the lobbyists. They're not even for right. you. They just want to make sure they get all your money. They're the partner that's creating an asset that generates cash flow no matter what, while you're taking all the risk and investing all the money. I mean, think about it. If somebody came to you and said, hey, let's be partners. You invest all the money. You take all the risk. I'm going to take a regular paycheck every week out of this investment, and then we're going to hope that you make money. Would you do that? Uh, it just doesn't seem rational to me, but people do it. And I guess it's better than putting your money in a pile and setting it on fire. I'm just saying there's other things like real estate that I think are better to do with your money than traditional retirement. It's like a very predatory relationship there. Yeah. And I, I hope that now people can really see the difference and maybe siphon some of that money that they're now using to put in their retirement account and maybe start something small, buying a smaller property and that's with the program that you have. We're here in Los Angeles. Homes here are ridiculously priced. A hundred thousand dollars is not going to get you much, but out of state, out of the main areas, you can buy a single family home, invest in a hundred thousand. So tell us about the legacy program. What it costs to get in, for example, we're buying properties that are between fifty and a hundred and fifty thousand dollars our clients, with usually twenty, twenty five percent down. So if you buy a hundred thousand dollar property and you put twenty thousand down, that's similar to what you might put into your four hundred one k every year. So instead of putting the money into your four hundred one k, you put the money into down payments on on a piece of real estate every year, and then a positive cash flows, and you get this money every year. Hopefully, uh, there are challenges and expenses, and things go up and down in real estate just like they do in the in the stock market. I'm not going to say you won't ever have challenges. You will, especially if you're going to be in real estate for the rest of your life. There's challenges. There's problems with tenants. There's repairs you're going to have. But most Americans have accumulated their bulk of their wealth from real estate. And most of the time, it's their primary residence. But when you're buying primary residences or single family homes, for example, in this case, in our, in our program, that's one of the things people do. Those go up just like your house. And over your lifespan, uh, from the time you buy it until you die, they're just going to have this tendency to go up and you're going to accumulate wealth. So real estate is the major source of wealth accumulation for most Americans. I know that came from some government study. I can't quote it, but you can probably Google it and see if that's not the case. Most Americans are not increasing their wealth through the stock market or their retirement accounts as their major source of wealth increase. At least have that uh, awareness. We're going to have that link that you talked about on YouTube in the show notes so that people can watch that and really be more informed about what their choices are. Yeah. So our program is designed to, we want people who want to be in our program for life. We're not after a quick buck. 
Right now, the price to join is $997. Also, we have free membership where you can just get emails and letters on properties and other things going on. Once you join that we help you find properties so the threshold is very minimal the risk is not like you're investing tens of thousands of dollars like some real estate seminar and training programs you see out there and we make our money as you make money so if you're actually successful and you're acquiring real estate that's where we make money in what we get from the where these uh, properties are sourced from we get some referral fees or other fees for helping to put these deals together and that's how we get paid that way we're making money when you're making money and our interests are more aligned that's why we like to do it that way and we want people who want to be in this for life who want to create multi-generational wealth we're not after a quick buck and you shouldn't be either this isn't a get rich quick thing but if you stick with it uh within 10 15 years you should have a pretty good stream of income and in many cases we replace people's job income during that period of time that i think is really good and investing in an ira is typically not going to do that for you. 401k you're not going to be able to replace your income and you have to wait till you retire to get the money out of there anyway you're going to find a lot more information on truelegacywealth.com i'm also a part of helping maurice with this program and we're also writing a book Yes. We hope that you make an educational decision on your future, your retirement, as well as your generational wealth. Maurice, any last word before we sign off? Well, yeah, I, I would really say if you've got the time and inclination, go watch that uh, video that I mentioned earlier, the Frontline, the Retirement Gamble. Just put in YouTube, your search Frontline, the Retirement Gamble. And you'll see, I just think it's pretty much a scam. To me, that's the way I interpret it reasonable minds can differ but after you watch it you'll see a, a lot of what's going on with your retirement accounts it's very interesting and we'll have that link in the show notes thank you so much maurice for your time you're welcome and listeners until next time always be learning and always be growing thank you so much for joining us today go to parentpumpradio.com and click on the pink box on the top of our homepage to listen to our new and archived shows to be instantly notified of new episodes, subscribe to our RSS feed. The RSS feed button is located at the top of the page where all our shows are featured. And after listening to the show, go to parentpumpradio.com or our Facebook page to leave your comments, questions, and topic suggestions. And while you're at our website, sign up to receive a free gift. Until next time, have a wonderful week. <laughs>